All right, everyone. Welcome to episode number one of Commission Breath. My name is Brandon Love, and I'm here with Tom Moffitt, and we are super stoked to have you with us. We're going to dive into a few different topics on the show. Some of it will be guest features. Some of it's going to be interview style, a little bit of strategy pieces, and some actionable steps that you can take to help grow your business and prevent yourself from having commission breath. But before we get too far down the rabbit hole, I just wanted to introduce ourselves a little bit. So why don't you take things uh, from here, Tom? Man, I, I love when you pull out the formal voice. Says that's the formal brand, and I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, to to elaborate on that, what Brandon was saying is, uh, well, first of all, we're super pumped. We've been talking about this what for for months now, doing this together, and it's just been something we've been wanting to do. Two buddies, you know, we've grown up, we've known each other for years now, and it's it's gonna be fun. So really, what we're trying to do here is we're really voicing out our experience in the mortgage business uh we're going to dive into like specific topics with episodes we're going to have guest appearances with people crushing in the mortgage business and then we're going to talk about our businesses and and kind of do a deep dive in that so yeah. um yeah and i think the idea here really is both of both tom and i are kind of like two to three years into the mortgage business we've scaled pretty well um but we're obviously looking to continue growing. So a lot of this is going to be sharing things we're testing in the meantime, as well as getting feedback from other professionals and other people in the industry so that we can all grow at the same time, uh, kind of build that feedback loop and scale that way. Yeah, that's just it. Like it, it's, we're going to be sharing everything that we're testing out. Like we, we want to be the test dummies for certain things because we've, we've figured out some things on our end that have been working well and we've trialed some things and it was just a flop. And we're using the podcast as a means to really share that. And some things are going to stick, some things aren't. And uh, we want to have that, you know, that collaboration within our network of um, working off each other and learning from each other. So that's that's the idea here behind the podcast. And again, we're super pumped. Brandon, what are, what are you drinking today, man? I'm having an IPA. So a little, uh, it's Friday afternoon for Tom and I, so we have had a tough week. Uh, so we're having a little, you don't need to give a disclaimer. We're allowed to have a drink. (laughs) (laughs) If you drink at work, what does it make you? Tom, what are you having over there? I've got, I've got a bone shaker again, IPA. So it looks like we got a similar drink here. This one's a strong one for everyone listening. we got a 7.1% here. There you go. Hopefully no more. Yeah. So, yeah, do you, why don't we dive into sort of our background in terms of how we got into the the mortgage business, where we're at today, and uh, kind of elaborate on that? Sure. Uh, I'll take things at the gate. So my background was always in startup businesses. I had a few different businesses after university that, uh, you know, you try, they fail, you try again, they fail again. And my last business was a vertical farm and I grew some field crops as well. And it was like the fastest way to lose money and my mind. And I was kind of at the point of like, holy crap, like what have I done? And our good friend, our mutual friend, Kyle Baker was like, dude, just like do mortgages. And I was like, I don't want to be like a boring mortgage guy. He's like, just do it. You'll be good at it. And I'm like, fine. Eventually I had that like straw that broke the camel's back moment. I couldn't be broke anymore with, supporting a young family and you know what i was gonna end up alone single and alone (laughs) sad and broke uh so i just i took the plunge uh i joined i believe what it was called i love mortgage broker pros scott's original island be pros yeah yeah, before it became bricks and just off to the races from there nice man yeah and you really not to to pump you up here don't get used to it but you really uh hit the ground running in your first, well, really first year, like you, you crush it your first year, second year, even more so. Um, like this is your second year, right? Second yeah, full year. This is my first full year. So oh, I first full year, year, right. Sold off the farm. I kind of knew that I was going to sell the farm and had to get a few pieces lined up to do that. And then that was done. I want to say by like mid February, March of last year. And um, yeah, it was just off to the races from there. I, I burned the boats and, and went yeah. all in. Yeah, you did. It took balls and proud of you, buddy. Thanks, man. Um, You got a bit of a different story that I don't think everyone totally knows. Um, It's kind of cool because you are running two full income streams right now. 
maybe even a little yeah. bit more. Well, yeah, so it's uh, it's been a ride. It's been awesome. For me, mortgage broker specifically, like mortgage business-wise, I started late 2020. So yeah, late 2020. So this is my third year. And first year was okay. Second year was better. A lot of refis as everyone experienced during COVID. And this year has really been the year that's popped off for me. And um, other than like, other than mortgage brokering, I'm also a far full-time firefighter. So that is my second income stream. And I'm really fortunate and, and uh, super blessed to have both income streams because with firefighting, I have the seven to eight shifts a month that I work. And out of those seven, to eight, it's really five weekdays that I'm kind of out of commission from uh, the mortgage business. I can still answer emails. I don't do any client calls while I'm at work. Um, so really I it's, I'm able to juggle both, which is, has been amazing. And I've slowly progressed building up my mortgage business while building up a small team underneath me as well. So, um, that's really my background went from totally blue collar background to, uh, not, not being a numbers guy at all, but somehow jumping in full feet with, uh, with the mortgage business. Yeah. And, and you're crushing it there too. And I think something that's really cool is you've taken the kind of the limitation of having that other job has forced you to build out systems and your team in a way that like I certainly didn't do. And I think a lot of other people don't do because they're able to allocate that time, but having that constriction on your time actually made you more creative in certain ways. And it's helped you scale quite quickly with your team and just your, your overall management style. Yeah. Pros and cons like the, to everything. And really the pro, I guess you can say is that it forced my hand, which obviously uh, was stressful at first when I started getting busy and, you know, I had closing dates while I'm at work and, and all that fun stuff. Yeah, That's when I hired early and it was forcing my hand to do that. And I think it, I'm fortunate that way that it's gone in that direction. And it's really forced me to look closely at my client journey, hiring early and Def, like redefining my process. So, um, yeah, like you said, it really just, uh, accelerated in that way. For sure. And I think that also forced you to kind of in on the topic of commission breath to kind of identify things that were maybe on your no-go list or things you weren't going to touch because it didn't fit into the system you had in place. And by virtue of that, you kind of eliminated a lot of that desperation that people who chase every single opportunity might have yeah for sure like you got to build out the no-go list like like everyone says and it really is important obviously as someone new in the industry it's gonna be hard to build out that no-go list but at least have a basic one where you know you're gonna cut out like commercial like let's just get real if you're doing residential just cut out the commercial some of you will argue me with me on that but uh, that's just a whole different world. You're going to spend so much time doing that. I mean, that's a whole other conversation, but um, why don't we, yeah. Why don't we define what commission breath is? Cause some people are probably wondering. Yeah. So commission breath, I, the first time I heard it has to be from you. I was telling you about a file and you're like, man, you have like commission breath on this. And I was like, I've never heard that term, but I absolutely love it. Uh, so what commission breath is to me, is when you are like so desperate to either get leads or close a file that you kind of turn the customer off with your desperation. And you'll see this in a lot of like pushy sales things where they keep dialing the price down or they're willing to cut it or I'll give you this, I'll give you this, I'll give you this. And it just starts to stink and you're like, oh, what is what is so bad about this product that they're so desperate to get rid of it? And th that's what commission breath is to me. And you can smell it on people and it is in my opinion, the ultimate business killer. Yeah, hundred percent. And whether we like to think it or not, we've all had it at one point or another. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure we can go over some examples. Why don't you give us one example of when when you've had it? Sure, I had uh, I had it one time where I had the deal. Well, I thought I had the deal. Uh, everything's going good, and lender comes back. They need an appraisal, so I tell the client, "Okay, but you're going to pay for the appraisal in this scenario." And then they're like, oh, well, my bank's willing to pay for the appraisal. Uh, so I'm like, okay, well, I'll pay That's for the appraisal. Deal. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, my bank beat beat you by five basis points. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll buy down 
five basis points myself and it kept concession 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 and i was feeling like i'm like feeling man like this is this deal is like there's hardly going to be anything left one and i just feel like this is a horrible experience and really at the end of the day the client was just like you know what we're actually we feel more confident with our bank we're gonna we're gonna stick with them oh, and i was like oh man i could have done that so much different i could have handled it better and since then i've changed how i approach things and you know you live and learn right like how how early on was that file in your in your career um that was probably so i had done the the zero to ten to get to the pro level at bricks and that was probably file like 18 or 19. it was the first time i really encountered someone like hard shopping me somewhere yeah. else and like um you know being like you know this is what my bank has beat it or or pound salt and i tried to beat it whereas now like how i would handle that differently is i would emphasize customer service emphasize that rate is just one piece of the puzzle and just say you know at, at the end of the day make a decision or we'll move on to working with the next client we can't linger here all day and i, I think that's that's really what's changed for me and win more files because of it so it's yeah. to experience but had to had to do it i was just gonna say that like although it sucked it was a big learning experience and it could have been a lot worse. It could have been more than one file. And, and now you, now you have your redefined process and you know what to say now. For sure. How about you? Have you ever had a, a scenario where you've had commission breath? I was trying to think of one while you were giving your story there. And I honestly, I'm drawing a blank. I, I know there is one there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't think of one right now, but if something comes to me, I, I'll definitely toss it out there. Yeah, so I was thinking too, sometimes it's easier to have a perspective on someone else's business. And a lot of people listening, you're probably in group chats with other brokers and agents. And, you know, hey, anyone know a lender in this area? And I remember a text that came out from you and I saw it on the ILMB uh, page. And it was like, does anybody know a private lender in like rural New Brunswick? Oh my God. Oh, oh yeah. What are you doing there? Uh, so yeah. Yeah, that, for I sure, man. You. That yeah, you know what? That's for sure one. And I think let me look back to that. So that was a a client that found me on Google. Um, yeah, I actually really like Google leads. They're usually pretty like surprisingly pretty strong. But regardless, this was a guy who, long story short, needed a private. I think he's a week away or a week and a half away from closing, had no other options. He had a lot going on. I'm like, okay, like, where'd you buy? And he's from my area, but he bought in New Brunswick. So I'm like, okay, New Brunswick. All right. I've never done a mortgage out there. Let's give it a try. Right then and there should have been when I was like, no, you're, that's not my no go list. First of all, it's a private. I don't do private. Second of all, I don't do mortgages in New Brunswick. So why the heck am I entertaining this? But I did as like, Hey, week and a half from away from closing. It's a private. Privates are easy, right? Um, so I pursued that, and it was just a shit show. And I think I, yeah, I reached out on the Island B Facebook page, and I think there's like, what? There's gonna be like ten thousand brokers on there. Yeah, something like that. And I think I had two people that wanted to help co-broker with me, like two people out of the, all of ten thousand people. And it just didn't go anywhere. I had like a couple options that were super expensive and man, I was just spinning my wheels and it was such a waste of time. And we, I could have spent that time prospecting and I would have been far better off. But yeah, that was a hundred percent commission breath. For sure. And that's 10 hours of your, your life you can't get back. And that was, like you said, better allocated to other parts of your business. And so I think that's the big piece is like identifying it and then just putting those parameters in so you don't do it again. And everyone's going to run into it at some point, especially in a down market. You're like, oh, I kind of need this deal. Or you look like your pipeline's not necessarily where you want it to be. And you start to think, okay, maybe I'll just, you know, I'll do this tough file that doesn't fit what I usually do, but I'll make it work because, you know, I've got a bills to pay. And that's when you, you end up fucking yourself over and, and you're, you're going to waste so much time. You're going to be a stress case around the home. And with your other clients, because you're yeah. just working on something you don't really know. And that's, to me, that's what I feel like is like, I'm going to piss away so many hours and 
my five-year-old's gonna come talk to me and i'm gonna be like ah and it's just like it I, rubs don't, off. I don't need that right so so with that being said though would you would you say the same thing like let's say someone listening out of our three listeners out there let's just say one of them is brand new in the industry what would you tell them to in terms of making your no-go list in order to avoid that commission breath like what would you tell them do you narrow it down so specific or is it more of like a broad thing to start off with I think figure out a few lenders that you know their stuff and you know where to send them. And so have like your A, your couple A people, have your couple, your B, maybe have that one MIC or private lender. But if it's outside of that threshold or you're like in the beginning, every file you're going to be trying to, you're going to be learning and have to do those hours of research. So I wouldn't be too quick to do it because you might, there's a lot of people who have a great business that's purely private, purely B side and it works for them and that might be your niche. Um, But if you find yourself being like, Hey, I do two B files a year and the rest of my business is a, well, maybe it's a good indicator that you shouldn't focus your energy on those B files because they're going to take more time. There is going to be someone who's better suited to it. And that also comes back to another piece that I think was like, if you have commission breath, a mint for commission breath, (laughs) it is like to say no and to tell a client, Hey, this is a better avenue to take. Here's maybe a better broker who's, who's suited towards it. And you can refer to them or in certain cases, people come in and they're like, Hey, here's my scenario. And you just know that this is best place with their local credit union or a a lender who's not in broker channel. And part of you might say, hey, I I really want to get this volume. But then at the same time, you're kind of forcing a square peg in a round hole. Whereas if you just tell them this is the best place to suit you, walk them across the street, introduce them to someone there. They're going to have such a better experience. And when their family member comes up and says, hey, I need a mortgage or their colleague at work, they're going to be like, hey, talk to this broker. He's not only interested in his own self-interest he actually told me to go to rbc even though he doesn't get paid anything for that and just such such a a way to stand out from the rest of the pack yeah 100 percent agreed on that and if i'm so i I always like to really define it into like actionable steps so if you're if you're someone that's brand new from what you're saying the first thing that you do is narrow it down but not too much like still try to explore different types of products, different types of files, get a feel for them because you're not going to know if you like dabbling with bank statement programs or not unless you try it. So the first one would be like, make your list, narrow it down as you go. The second would be build out that that hub, I guess you can call it of other brokers who specialize in certain things or credit unions, build that around you so you can refer that out. So that would be like step one and two. Yeah, exactly. And when you're new, you have the time. Like, let's be real. You're not getting hit with like 20 inquiries at a time. Yeah. You have time to kind of explore these these ways out. But also don't be afraid to just like say, you know what? I can't service you the best. Here's someone who can. Because it's going to make you so much stronger. Yeah, exactly. That That's just it. Um, like you said, if you're brand new, like everyone always loves saying like, oh, make that no-go list, narrow it down as much as possible. But like when you're brand new, you you're you have no income coming in. You need that. Yeah, like you're just happy to have a file, even even if it's a file that you have a feeling may not go anywhere. Just getting experience, like hands on wise, I would recommend pursuing it as long as you're not taken away from your prospecting time. Like prospecting comes mm-hmm. first. As long as that's not intact, then keep going with it. Like why not? For sure, I think that's. I think you hit the nail on the head there. If you can still. If you can get it done and you can still prospect, you're good. Yeah. If you're if you're allocating all your time to getting it done and you're stopping prospecting, then you're just push pushing your progress way out. Exactly. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, that is that is what commission breath is. We're not gonna dwell on it too much. It's just a fun name for a show, we thought. But most of what we plan to be doing is just sharing tips and tricks on how to grow your business. So this is our little intro today, uh, just so you can get to know us. And each week, we're going to come back to you with some more. Yeah, that's right, man. And uh, like we said, our, our whole structure of everything is going to be 
uh, interview style. So whether it's just Brandon and I chit chatting sort of like this format here today, or in the future, we're going to have on some guests that are just crushing it out there, or maybe they have something unique that they're doing that's working. We're going to bring them on the show, really distill that. And we're also going to have like short episodes, like five, 10 minute episodes of uh, really dialing in on a specific strategy, whether it's lead gen, customer journey, or whatever, like mindset, we're going to be chatting about that and really distilling everything step by step. So we're super pumped about it. Um, I guess we can kind of close out this episode. But before we go, Brandon, what's one thing you're doing in your business right now that's working from you from a lead gen perspective? So right now, one thing that I've been doing is I have been so each week I send my realtors a weekly video. And, you know, not all your realtors are super busy right now in, in a lot yeah. of markets. So what I've been doing, because with a certain chunk of them, we don't have any live files to work on. So I've been calling them and saying, hey, do you find value in what I'm sending weekly? And is there anything else that I can do to provide value to you? And just a kind of way to show them that I still care about the relationship, even though there's no leads coming in. And for quite a few partners that were stagnant, it's it's reactivated them. And I've got some leads come in that way. Love it. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, similar in that regard to like realtors. I mean, both of us built up our business off, off of realtor partners. So we're going to have a lot of similarities. But for me, it's actually been since we had the rate hike this week, what I've been doing for the past, I'd say, year is every rate announcement, I send out uh, a mass email to my whole list, like my whole database. But I exclude my realtors from that because I actually send them a separate email. It's the same email, but at the beginning of it, I say, hey, here's an email template. You can send this out to your clients, your database. Take me off the branding, take the video off, like use it for yourself. And it's funny because I have a lot of realtors that will repost it on social media. They send it out to their database. I'm sometimes in their database. But a lot of the times they're doing that, but they're keeping my info on there just because they're so happy that I'm providing that for them. And then I'm accessing, I'm tapping into all of their different databases. So this past week, I got two leads just from sending out that one email. And they're both renewal leads from realtors. I'm like, holy crap, I can get renewal leads from realtors? Like, that's insane. Yeah. Um, so that could be like another, I'm just thinking now, that could be another episode where we dive into specifically how I did that and how you can implement that into your business. For sure. And actually that email that you sent out, I am on your one email list. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Tom and I share a lot of other strategies because we have a, a separate business together as well. But uh, Tom had shared this. So I'm like, you know, what? this is a really good idea. So I just took it and I reworked it for my audience. And same with me. I got a couple leads from that as well as I have been working on getting this one team in my neighborhood for the oh, yeah, that's right. right. And uh, they were like, we love this. Please come meet with our team. We want to have all our agents start working with you. And it was such a huge win, uh, win for me. So I was super stoked on that. So thank you for that content. And uh, for those of you who are like, how do I get my hands on those emails you send out? Uh, Tom and I are under the BRICS umbrella and we are going to start building out some stuff for for agents who want to join bricks with us um so it's going to be kind of a share and a few behind the scenes pieces that will little extras there so if you're interested shoot us a dm or an email and we can chat in further detail there yeah <laughs> man uh no that's that's awesome so i guess we'll cap off this episode and uh we'll see you guys next week cheers cheers <laughs>